Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game with another Cheat Engine tutorial for you. Today we're going to be looking into the physics of games. We're going to be using Far Cry Primal. And this is basically like a two-parter, but they're totally different tutorials, and I'll tell you why. Today we're going to learn how we can make a super jump for any game, even when you can't find the gravity physics in the game. There's still other ways and other methods and techniques that you can use to still achieve these same results. And today we're looking at that, and we're not going to be messing with gravity at all. We're going to be messing with the physics of our character itself, and I'm going to show you how to do that and how we can extend on how high he can jump, and uh, we're just going to go from there. The reason I wanted to make this video first is because next week we're going to learn how to make a fly hack in which some elements of this lesson is going to go with that lesson. So it's kind of long to put both in the same video. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to go ahead and bring everything on up here, stick around, and we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, I brought up Cheat Engine and we're going to go ahead and attach that to the game. I already have uh, a few of my cheats with me here. And you will need infinite health. And I always recommend when you're doing super jumps or, or trying to hack super jumps or anything that could have an instant kill factor to it, uh, you want to go ahead and have your infinite health. Now, what I did when I looked up infinite health is I put what accesses this address on my health address. And I kind of went back to the very beginning of when it's actually assigning everything its health address. And as you go walking along and everything, you can see it assigns you your health address and anything that has a health value to it as you, you know, as more things come into view on the screen. So, and I just have 999 going all the way through, you know, where it gets to where it writes and the reason for doing that is that this particular game and every game is different this game when you fall from a height that's unacceptable you have an instant kill flag or an instant death and usually the way they program that in most games is that it just writes automatically to your health sends through once a condition is met that you fell from an unacceptable height it will always put in uh, a subtraction to your health that's always higher than the highest cap you can have in the game so what you need to do is make your health higher than what the instant death is and that way it never reaches zero that it's death flag is never triggered and you will need that for this game and trying to find uh, super jump and fly hacks and things like that because we do have to jump up in the air we have to fall off ledge when we do get our super jump and when we come back down we don't want to die so infinite health very important i got tons of videos that show you how to find infinite health how to compare out other addresses your enemies uh, anything else that may have a health value and just have infinite health for your guy and i will be happy to post some up in the upper right hand corner but now we're just going to look for our height vectors and there's really two different vectors that come into play in super jump now all we're concentrating on this lesson is height basically a game's program like this it's not really a world out there that's not really wind blowing that's not really trees swaying it's a bunch of shapes polygons and collision fields and you gotta start looking at games based on their mechanics and uh, you can kind of work with it a little better you have a ground collision field that's what makes it appear that you're standing on solid ground you have a collision field for trees cars buildings whatever they're just polygon shapes if they didn't have collision fields on them which is something like a force field you could walk right through them and then later on in the future we're going to get into how to do a no clip in ghost mode how to walk through walls and stuff like that i'll show you how to find this stuff but that's later but what we're concentrating on is the physics of the game. Now, what, you have gravity. You have artificial gravity. Now, a lot of times you can go in there and just find the gravity. If you can, you can manipulate it however you like, and you can get your fly hacks, super jumps that way. But when you can't find gravity, we have to go a different route. And in this game, I wasn't able to find it. I'm sure somebody has. That's fine. But it doesn't really matter because you can do these things so many different ways. What I go for is height vector. You have, when you're standing on the solid ground collision field, when you're standing there, you're at zero. And it's got a cap that it doesn't let you, allow you to jump higher than. It's, and it's just to give you the illusion that the guy's just normally jumping, you know, 
like we can't jump any higher in a certain amount in the real world but what we try to do is find that height vector and we increase it do as much as we want and then we can jump as high as we want because the game doesn't know any better so that's what we're going to be looking for and we are going to be utilizing the feature enable speed hack and I want to show you some things I'm going to slow the game down very very slow it's really cool and I want to show you what happens when you jump you'll see it a lot better going at that rate of speed you don't see it going at normal speed but you'll see the guy jump up and you'll see it freeze momentarily that's because at, when it reaches that height vector that variable then automatically a condition is met and then it transfers the program to another code region another function to where it decreases your height instead of increasing it so when you jump up it increases it reaches that height variable it meets a condition a flag turns on and then it sends you to another function location where it starts decreasing your height vector and to give you the illusion that you're falling back down to the ground okay so that's what we're trying to find is that height vector and we're going to increase that so it's up near the sky <laughs> so when we jump that condition is never going to be reached until it reaches that top height vector so let's get to it and I want to show you what it does first thing we're going to do the game is uh, going to be going real slow so let me go ahead and uh, click apply to slow the game down now when I jump you match the space bar you can watch the animation I want you to see this take a look watch his hands when he gets to the apex of that height vector you'll see a freeze watch see that see that freeze right there it reached the height vector it switched on a flag now it's going to another function to bring us back down to decrease our height so what we want to look for is where it froze at right there you can only see it when you really slow the game down at normal speed you won't even see that freeze it'll go so fast you won't see it so I always recommend when you're finding this way to really slow the game down it'll help you out always look for float values they're either going to be on floats or doubles just about 99.999 infinite nines percent of the time so that's what we're going to do now I do know I'm at zero right now being on the ground when you're on the ground you're at zero okay that's the lowest point you can get to and it don't matter if you're standing on a cliff standing on top of a mountain peak it's still zero if your feet are touching the bottom collision field your height vector travels with you it's always going to be zero and to whatever it goes to so it don't matter where you are okay all right so what we're going to do is we're going to jump up until it hits that freezing point and then we're going to pause it We'll see it freeze. That's what we're looking for. Boom, right there. You saw it freeze. We want to pause it right there. That is its maximum height vector. We're going to do increase value. Now, this doesn't take really long. You'll, you'll weed these out really quickly. It's just starting out that's a pain. That's all. So, I'm going to go ahead and let it do this scan. I'm going to pause it while it does that. Okay, it's finished the scan. We got about a little over six million left. We can go ahead and start weeding some of these out. Let it do its thing. Now what we want to do is just let him go all the way back down to the ground. Now that we're going through the different function to decrease our height, we want it to go all the way back down to zero. So let it go down and let all the animation stop. Now we can we don't as long as we don't move we're still at zero we we need to switch our camera a little bit to get rid of any camera codes we might have we just want to go over here at that value and we're at zero now maybe not every single game it'll be at zero it could be like a negative value or just like a one or something like that so you may just you know your first time through you may just want to do unknown value and don't do exact value which will take you a little bit longer but you know it'll loop it'll get you better results quicker just in case it happens not to be zero but most games it'll be zero when you're on the ground 
So just keep that in mind here. So we're down to 4 million. Now what we're going to do this time is when we jump up, we're just going to go increased, increased, increased. When we're going down, we're going to go decrease, decrease, decrease until we stop and then we'll just hit the zero. So let's go ahead and jump back up. We're going to increase, 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 increase. We're going to hold it till we pause us. Boom, right there. Then increase. And then I'm just hitting unchanged. Now I'm using my hotkeys like I normally do. We're down to about 24,000. So it's weeding out pretty good. Now when he goes back down, we're going to do it the opposite way. Decrease value. Alright, here we go. So we'll just wait till he starts heading back down. Decreased. Decreased. I'm just going to wait till he hits the bottom. I don't want to go over it. So be careful doing this. Okay. Okay, he's back down now, so we're just going to hit zero. So we're down about 2,000. So it's weeding out really, really good. And it'll just be a flat zero. So all these others that you're seeing that's decimal point something those aren't what we're looking for so it'll just be zero so it'll weed out pretty quickly all right let's do it again hopefully this will be the last time increased 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 wait for the pause there it is increased we can unchange 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 we're down about 846 so let's let him go back down now. And I'll put it back to, up to normal speed here in just a minute. That speed hack is an awesome tool. Alright. So let's let him hit the ground. Let everything come to a settle. Alrighty. I think that's it. Let's go ahead and put in zero for exact value. And now we kind of want to kind of pay attention to some of these zeros like these right here. We can go ahead and add them to the list if we want. And the way we know that we got the right one, he'll try to keep jumping a little bit. Because we're going we're gonna to put it where it's like higher than the ceiling, so the game isn't registering that he's really hit the ground yet so he'll kinda keep doing the jump animation so let's see here so we're intentionally confusing the programming to find which address we need I don't see any more zeros so it's well here's one right here so what I'm going to do is we're going to pay close attention to these and I'm going to Hit them all at 20. Mash the space bar to lock those in. And we're just going to see what happens. So I'm going to jump up. And when it goes back down, let's see if... Uh, we confuse the game. Now we just kind of want to pay attention, see what he does or how he reacts. If he don't react at all, then we haven't found it. All right, I don't, I don't think we have found it yet. So let me go ahead and do a net scan for zero. We're back at the base. No, that's all the zeros we got. So it's got to be one of these two. So let me put it back on normal speed. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, yeah. Because you'll see him react. Yeah, you see that? Did you see that little double jump? That's why I wasn't noticing and I had it on too slow. But yeah, it's that you'll see one of those values continue to stay. That's the one we're looking for. See how the others go back to zero? 
We want the one that's staying. Awesome. That's the one we wanted. And you got to look for just any little subtlety like that. So you got to really be observant. And this is hard. You will be crashing your game a lot trying to find these type things. So keep that in mind. I, you know, there's really nothing easy about it. And you could do it several times before you actually get the right one. So this isn't easy. It's a lot of trial and error. And I'm sorry about that. But it does work. When you cannot find gravity, it does work. So what we're going to do here, now we can't really influence this particular value right here. What we're going to do is we're going to just find out what is accessing it. And we're going to go take a look in the die set data structure. Because all those height vectors and things of that nature will be roughly together. Just like coordinates are. And you can modify coordinates too. I don't particularly like doing that for super jump because it doesn't give you an actual super jump. And... Uh, I like doing it this way because it's more efficient. Let's go ahead and put that over here and just let the game run. We'll just take a couple of jumps like that. And you see here, it's in the RDI registry at the offset that it's pointing to of AC0. And it's in that way for all three. So it doesn't really matter which one we use because we're just going to the dissect data structure. So let's copy that. We don't, we don't really need this anymore because our height vector will be a constant it'll stay the same regardless of what we do that's the one we need okay so die set data and structures we copied down the base address of RDI that's the base so if we add ACO to this it'll give us this address right here so this is the base address that I copied so let's define new structure and just yes everything that comes up and we want to go down to AC0 now sometimes cheat engine doesn't interpret these value types correctly in here so you need to be aware of that this is a more advanced lesson I should have made that clear when I first started but and you see here uh, it's done it as a floor, uh, as a double but it's actually a float for right now and what I did normally is I start from here, right where the pointer started at AA0, and I just start messing around with values. I start changing everything I can see. But I just do it like a couple at a time and see if it affects my guy in any way. And what you'll find when you start here, then change that to like, I don't know, 100. Change that to like 200. Change that to like 100. Then I came to this one right here, and I put in like 1,000. So... If for this one right here, we're just going to save a little time, and I'm going to show you when I double click that, I can change the actual number. I put in like a thousand. I click resume. Now watch what happens when I jump. Let me turn my infinite health on. Okay, good. I got it on. All right, so when I go to jump, boom, we're jumping higher. See that? So we found our height vector variable. So we're jumping higher so we know that that was the constant that we were looking for. So this is the one we need to manipulate and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to find out what is accessing this address. We want to take a look at the opcodes affecting this because this is staying at a constant all the time. So nothing's really writing to it unless it's loading up. Or it's constantly writing that constant. So that's why these things are a little hard to find. So find out what accesses this address. Go take a couple of jumps. And right up here is where we want. Right at the very top. So I'm going to take a look. We see that that, I believe, is the lowest address or one of the lowest. But I want to go to this one right here. And I just experiment with each one of these. I go back to it. But I know that that's the place, and it's just so we can save a little time here. But what you want to do is go to each one and just see which only uh, which opcode only has one address going through it. That's all I'm looking for. And I'm going to put it as a float. I'm going to put this as a float. They jump one time. We see that something's just constantly monitoring that, and we see this 
value right here. I want you to take a look at something. Okay. This address right here. There's two completely different addresses, but they're actually the same as each other. They affect each other. Okay. So when I change this to say 1500. Let's see. Hang on. Yeah, 1500. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me make sure I'm back on the ground. I don't think it changes. Alright, now that's not going to change, so I don't really have to lock it in. These are constants, okay? Take a look at that double value. It just it went truncated on me. But when I jump up this time, look at this. We've increased that height vector, so the game now has a higher threshold before they consider the maximum he can jump. And with our infinite health code on, it keeps writing 999. A zero never hits our health, so it never triggers our instant death. And the game knows no different. So we can use this to give us our super jump. So what I normally do from there is I'll just go ahead and I'll just modify this particular code and I'll, I'll write a flag with it to turn it on and then back off again. And I'll just set uh, the off back at four so he only jumps a certain height or a three, I forget what it was normally. What I normally do, let's just, i tell you what, let's just make sure it goes back to the regular value because I want to reset the game. As long as we have the opcode up, we can reset the game and then we can go write our cheat for it. Okay, as it's loading back up, let's go ahead and uh, get our game plan on. Okay, good. So let's, okay, we're back to normal, good. All right, so here's what we want to do. Let's go ahead and find the new address for the float value, because we're gonna need it, because remember, this is a constant, so when we go to change it, we need to change it back to what it originally was. And like I say, uh, writing this script, this is nothing new to those that's been following my channel. We're just gonna make a simple on and off switch when we turn the switch on uh, we have super jump when we turn it back off it goes back to this normal value we just have to put it in there manually because it is a constant okay so that's what we need to remember right there 1.25 that is our height ceiling and float so let's get back to it and let's go ahead and just start the script now click auto assemble and we're just going to do an AOB injection at that location we're going to call that SJ1 for super jump. Hopefully it'll let us do that. All right, here we go. We can take off a little bit of that. We don't need all that. <clears throat> all right, so we do need to make a label for the name of our switch. We need to make two labels. One for the name of the switch, okay? We'll put label. Oops, my bad. Label parentheses, and we'll put uh, S jump underscore on that way we know what that's supposed to be and then just down here somewhere we're going to go ahead and declare the vi at zero and we're going to have zero be in off because this script is this script right here is just going to be like an activation but we're going to have our switch in another script that actually turns it on so right here let's just put it uh as on just like that and we're going to declare a d word at zero Alright, so we got the switch out of the way for right now. Now we need to modify our script. We need another label. And this is going to be the area that it jumps to when that switch is on. That we, I'm just going to call it raise up. Raise up our height ceiling. This is where we want it to jump to when this switch equals 1. And I'll show you how to do that. Oops. 
All right, so let's just copy this, and we'll just have it go to regular code when the switch is off, but we need to tell it to put that 1.25 back on there. All right, so let's go up here to new men. We're going to have it compare our recently created switch. This is the name of it. We put it in brackets, and we want it to compare to 1. We want 1 to signify when it's on. So to meet that condition, it's going to jump if equal to raise up right here and this is where we want it to change that float value which here's the address the registry plus the offset we want it to move into that address a float value so we put that in parentheses and we're going to say 1500 and we can play around with that and adjust it as we need later as we play through the game and when it equals that value it's going to meet that condition it's going to bypass the code and it's going to jump down here and start writing 1500 to our float however when it is zero it does not meet this condition and it's just going to come down here to code and continue on so we need it to move to make sure it moves back in that 1.25 because it won't do it without us telling it to because it is a constant value it's not a constantly changing value so we need to tell it to put the 1.25 back in there. So, everybody understand that? And if you don't understand what I'm doing with the switches and everything, like I say, this is built off previous lessons. And uh, I will put all the lessons needed to understand all this up here. You can learn how to compare out, how to make your own flags, yada, yada, yada. Go take a look if you don't understand this. I go over it step by step. I think that's all we really need. As long as we have that jumping to raise up switch, we need to make a new. Oh, I know what we didn't do. We need to register symbol. Well, actually, let me let me just take that out. Here's our script. Let me bring it back up. I've already saved it. That way, I don't have to redo it. We need to register the symbol for our switch so we can use it outside of the script. So that's my bad. So. We're going to use this outside of the script. To do that, we can we have to register the symbol so it will recognize it outside of the script. And down here, you always need to unregister your symbols. All right, that, that's all we need. So that looks good. All right, so now let's make a new script just to declare our switch at one. And all we really need is the enable and disable. Just to make sure I copy it down correctly, I'm just going to copy what the name of our switch is. There we go. So when we activate this particular script, we want it to declare that double word, or D word, excuse me, to one. And when we disable this script, we want it to declare at zero because of that compare. All right. That, and that's really it. So when it's 1, it's going to hit that 1500. When it's 0, it's going to write that 1.25 back to it, which is our normal job. All right, so we'll call that first one Activate SJ for Super Jump. And let's just put that as like a child script underneath it because the first one has to be activated. And we'll call this one Super Jump. On. Slash off. All right, so let's turn this script on and let's assign a hotkey to this one. We're going to register a hotkey to turn that on for us, and I'm just going to pick a uh, number seven, just a random number. It don't really matter. When it's activated, it's going to put an X in the box, change that to one, and deactivate it, changes it back to zero. That's just to give us a auditory uh, clue to know that it's turned on and off. I think that's all we really need. Let's just go test the 7. You see it puts the X in the box. Very good. So let's go back to the script. So let's jump normally. So when we mash 7, we want to mash 7, turn the script on. Now it should be writing 1500. And you see it does. Hope I got my infinite health script on. Oh, and I didn't. Let me redo that. I forgot to. 
Let's try that again. <laughs> I had it on, but it wasn't for that particular. You, you got to turn it on when you're actually in the game. So let me make sure that that's working. But you get the idea. So let's. There we go. So the infinite health's working, so we don't die. And you see we have super jump. Now, I didn't really go in there and do the velocity to jump out farther. And that would also be in the same dissect data structure. Just got to go play around some values. I hadn't really done that yet. I just wanted to get you going with the height to show you that you can do it without modifying gravity. And without modifying your Y coordinate, which is your vertical. You can actually do it other ways with height ceilings. You can also do it with ground collision fields. However, next week, uh, we're going to add on to this lesson, and we're going to make a fly hat for this. And we're going to use that ground collision field technique. And I'm just going to have to show it to you and explain it to you then. But for right now, that's all I really have time for. Let's turn it off just to make sure. And you see when we turn it off, we're back to normal jumping. When we turn it on, boom. And we can increase that or decrease the height of that as we see fit. Jump up on this cliff here, see if we can. Boom, look at that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, until next week, uh, that's all there is for this one. Real easy stuff. It just takes a little bit of playing around and crashing your game a few times. It's going to happen. You might have to troubleshoot a little bit and just play around with these values, but you'll eventually find something you can work with. And so it's a good technique when you cannot find gravity and other things. You do have other options available to you. All right. Well, that's all I got time for this week. Come join us if you haven't already over at our Facebook channel page. It's Cheat the Game. The link will be in the description. We'd love to have you over there. Also, make sure to go join my pals over at guidedhacking.com. They go over C++, C Sharp, Ida Pro, uh, all the way from beginner levels of game hacking all the way into advanced and reverse engineering. Those guys really know their stuff, and they're happy to help you. All right, you guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, doesn't mind cheating. You take care now. Oh, yeah. That fly hat's going to be awesome. You guys wait.